Welcome back. So what is the best way to recognize and respond to a narcissist? You know, it can be incredibly hard to tell who is narcissistic at first glance because often it just comes across as confidence or enthusiasm. But once you learn to pay attention to some key factors, you'll know the signs pretty obvious. Now today, I'm going to share with you really 15 signs. 12 of them are about the narcissist, three about the people attracted to him. Now, in all fairness, there are probably 30 or more actual signs, you know, whether you're talking covert, overt, all the different types of narcissism. But at least in my experience, these first 12 are like, they're evident regardless of what type of narcissist. These are like the core symptoms. Again, there are many others, but this is just my opinion, which doesn't make it right. But I want to share those with you so that you can, you know, you have a basic framework to go, all right, this is what I want to keep an eye out. So the first one is this, they lack empathy. Um, and what this can look like is kind of listening without listening. <laughs> I'm going to throw myself under the bus. Um, this, what this would look like is when my first wife, oh my God, I'm having what I call a shame burp to have to admit this, but we, our relationship was rocky throughout. And um, the best I could do back then was I couldn't stand up for myself. And so I learned to just shut up and be quiet and not pay attention. Well, that looks like not a, no empathy. And a perfect example of that was the day she told me she was pregnant with our first child. And I was sitting at the breakfast table reading the paper and I heard her say something and I didn't respond. And then she yells, did you hear me? And I'm like, yeah, you know, of course. I acted like a child saying, yeah, I heard you dad. Um, she goes, so what did I say? And of course I didn't know. And she, this was one of, I think this was the second time the abuse started. She came over and just wham just hit me across the head and goes, I told you I'm pregnant. Now, while in that moment, I wasn't empathetic, I wasn't listening, is that who I am? No, I had a moment of it, but a true narcissist, that is consistent. They, they're never listening. And even if they are, they may feign empathy, but they're really not capable of it. They don't have remorse. Like you can see, I have remorse. I have shame over my perfect imperfection that I didn't know how to handle myself early on in the relationship. Um, I take ownership of it. I own that. I'm not condoning her abuse, but I'm leading with my imperfection. That's empathy. Um, it's also having empathy for her. Like think of her position. She's pregnant for the first time. That would be awful that your husband's more wrapped up in the newspaper than listening to you. Like, can you imagine her experience? That'd be heartbreaking, okay? And a narcissist isn't capable of that. Um, aspect number two of the narcissist is special treatment. So what you want to keep an eye out for is restaurants, taking the car in to get fixed, um, clothing stores, wherever it may be, are they constantly looking to be at the front of the line, get special treatment from the salespeople? You know, do they feel entitled to it? Um, if their water, you know, they said light ice and it's filled with ice, does that, you know, do they explode at that? You know, are they constantly looking to be elevated with a certain type of treatment? There's a difference between advocating your, for yourself and being entitled. Advocating for yourself is gathering information, asking politely. Entitlement is, no, you owe this to me, and I'm angry if I don't get it, all right? <clears throat> Number three, they're very grandiose, huge fantasies. Fantasies about their career, fantasies about what they want to achieve in life, about um, how capable they are at different things. There's a difference between knowing that you have a certain skill but not having the skill and believing you do have it or telling others that you're going to achieve it. That's grandiosity. It's, it's a level of reality beyond what is real. All right. So they're living here or their skill set is here. 
yet their ideas or the way they speak about things or their dreams about things are a complete fantasy. Reality and fantasy are separate from each other. All right. Number five, appearances matter. Um, or number four, appearances matter. They're very superficial. Their appearance um, matters more than anything. And even um, your appearance, you know, they, they want the hot person. They want to be associated with the powerful, with the um, popular. They're always about social climbing, about social connections. It's all about appearances matter more than anything. You know, do the, what do they look like? What does the family look like? How is everything projected? It's all about other esteem and what they're getting, you know, social media, how many likes? Oh my God, they have more. I need to get, you know, I need to be friends with them. I need to be associated with them. All of that external validation matters tremendously to a narcissist. That goes to uh, number five, associations. I kind of mixed them together. They only want to be associated around powerful, attractive, popular people. The, the two kind of go together. That sense of appearances matter and associations matter. They're, you'll, you'll see that play out over and over. I don't want to sit with them. I don't want to go out with them. What? They're white trash. You know, things like that. Or I can't go to that place. Nobody popular. Would you see so-and-so at a place like that? There you go. What are you wearing that for? Do you, do you see what you're wearing? Those are comments of a narcissist, all right? Number six, emotional dysregulation. Um, they will get angry like that, just blow up, throw tantrums like you're like a child, you know? Now, some of the no narcissists, covert and others, are so, you know, gifted at manipulation that they can, they can fool you with periods of quiet in all of these aspects, all right? This is part of the emotional dysregulation. They can put on the act of holding it together. But, you know, there's Dr. Romani. She's brilliant. If you want to learn about narcissism, look up Dr. Romani on YouTube. She, to me, she's the best. And she uses the analogy of a rubber band. And, you know, if you, you can stretch it out, and that's kind of like a narcissist. They can stretch it out, stretch it out, but eventually that rubber band snaps and it goes back. And that's the temper tantrum. That's the anger. They, they can never sustain a change. They always bounce back to who they are. And that's a key thing that you're looking for. All right. Number seven, they're highly um, sensitive to any type of critique or criticism, yet they are highly critical of you and everybody else. All right. That's pretty self-explanatory. Number eight, uh, they don't think they need to change. Any suggestion that they need help, they need to learn more, that the problem might somehow reside with them, or that they could adjust in some way, boom, huge wall. Like it is just, they'll, this is where the empathy, lack of empathy, that they would just stop listening, they just can't even go there. Rage will come out. All of these, all of their dysfunctions will come up to protect that grandiosity of, what do you mean, me change? It's them, it's not me, I'm great, all right? <clears throat> Number nine, very jealous. Jealous not only of who you talk to and who you spend time with, but jealous of people with higher status um, that are better than them. Now, we all get envious, I get it too, but there's a difference between being driven by it that then triggers, think of that rubber band, that then triggers all of these other dysfunctions. They are consumed and it'll trigger the rage, it'll trigger the emotional instability, all right? Number 10, gaslight. And this is, this is the most, for me at least in my experience, when I went through it, the gaslighting is the most destructive because you really question everything about yourself. And if you have the sense that you need to record your conversations, you're being gaslit. You, you will have the sense that you're crazy. You'll be like, wow, maybe I am bad. Like you're constantly questioning yourself. Um, there's always the sense that when you, you'll come into, a, maybe you even started the conversation with a healthy critique or suggestion or request. But by the end of it with a narcissist, you walk away apologizing 
because you were so wrong and out of place. That's gaslighting, okay? And to me, that's the most brutal part because while I'm always an advocate of, you know, codependence, we, we do allow people to infect us with their thoughts, feelings, and actions. It's really hard to protect yourself against somebody who gaslights you because that's the problem with abusers. They trample boundaries. Boundaries, codependence recovery, don't work with them. They have no respect for them. And so it can be very hard not to get sucked in and be affected by somebody who gaslights you. All right, number 11, they are disloyal. They will always, they will leave you at any opportunity for higher status, anything bigger and better than you. If, the, if it's to their advantage, they're gone like that. No feeling about it, doesn't matter. It's just like, well, what? Uh, you think I'd stay with you? Like, do you see who I'm with? Do you see what, like, I don't under, even understand why you're upset. See, there's the gaslight, boom. Yeah, it's just creepy. Sorry, it's too, you know, I'm recalling conversations and it just kind of hit me there of experiencing that. Um, number 12, and this is really one of the in, insidious aspects. They get pleasure from others' misery. I remember, you know, one of the narcissists I, I married and the glint in her eye, the tilt of her head and the little smirk. She got so much joy from taking that knife and gutting me. Like it was, you know, I mean, it's like a child opening their favorite Christmas present, a six-year-old, you know, a four to six-year-old, they're um, cognizant enough of how special Christmas is and they get that Christmas present they wanted the whole year and that's, that's that excitement that a narcissist gets. And that, so you see that little, like they do something hurtful and they see it in you and you, and you can see and feel how much they enjoy it. Get out. Now we get to the three aspects that I brought up of, to let you know if you are with a narcissist and they have to do with us. We always have to take ownership of who we allow into our life. And that's why, at least in my videos, I always include aspects of at the part we play because we are not innocent bystanders. We, each individual is responsible for their life and must take ownership of their life. Um, to not do so is narcissistic in nature. It's, hey, no, you have to be everything I want, but it's from a passive aggressive position of, well, it's not my fault, I didn't know. Well, then go learn. That's our responsibility. That came out harsh, I didn't mean it harsh. I mean it emphatically, really with empathy of, God, please, people, Stop this victim mentality of it's not my fault. That kills all of us. I'm really trying to empower you. Go learn because we don't have to end up with these people in our life. All right. And the key sign for you to recognize in yourself is you think you can love them out of it. You're, you're sitting there going, God, well, they were so hurt. If I do this, if I dress this way, if I, if I act this way, if I just, if I just, if I just, if I just, you're constantly thinking all the different ways you could adjust who you are to get them to love you and get them through this. That's a key sign. You are with the narcissist and that's the part you're playing. The second thing is uh, you think you're not enough. In other words, you would say things like, man, if I was better looking or if I was thinner, if I made more money, if I cooked the better meals, if I did this or did that, if I didn't have, if I wasn't so needy, if my parents weren't this way, remember, that's part of the gaslighting. That's why we are prey for their gaslighting is because uh, underneath that is low self-worth and shame. And so we will constantly bring it back on us and think we could, if we could be different, we could get them to love us. Well, where did we learn that? Childhood. We were made to take care of somebody in childhood. And that's why this comes up. And that leads to the final thing. We look for ways that we can change them. The key indicator that you're with a narcissist is you are online watching videos like this, reading, resourcing, everything you can, not to learn how to save yourself or to heal yourself, but you're trying to figure out the narcissist and what you need to do to get them to like you, to get them to be different, all of your questions, and I get almost every single person that reaches out to me privately 
or even in my public comments on the narcissism posts, they will almost invariably be questions about the narcissist. Not about themselves and how they need to heal themselves and the part they're playing or, or any of that. It's always, can you help me understand the narcissist? That is a major red flag that you are with a narcissist. Now, not always, we're all, we're all codependent, so that can happen in a so-called normal relationship. I'm just, in this example, that is key. So basically, a person attracted to a narcissist is putting 90% of their efforts into the relationship and not into themselves. So how do you respond? What do you do if now you've listened to this and you're like, oh my God, that's me, that's us. Three options, get out, just get out. The chances of a narcissist ever doing work and ever healing are slim to none. And just like that rubber band effect, they might do some of it, but they don't see an advantage to being empathetic. They don't see an advantage to this. They will always bounce back. And that's why you, you, you have to let go of the grandiose fantasy yourself that you can somehow change this. Now, maybe you're in a situation, married, kids, religion, so financial, there's something where you're like, I can't get out, Kenny. I have to stay. Well, okay. Then the second option is this. You have to lower your expectations. You just, you have to realize that 90% of the time you'll get nothing, that it is all about them. And so my suggestion to you is this massive self-care. Because remember the three things that make it possible that you are with a narcissist within yourself is 90% of your life is about them and 10% about you. You need to flip that dynamic. 90% needs to be about you. You need to get into self-care. Um, you need to get into therapy, whether it's a coach or someone like myself um, or a therapist. Um, you need to see how your childhood trained you to and created an attraction where you most likely took care of your parents just like this. You looked all up and down, left and right, sideways, trying to find a way to get your parents happy. They may not have been narcissists themselves, some could have been, but you were trained to seek this out. You need to learn to heal from that. Um, and you're just, because you're just replaying it. That's why you ended up. We are, all relationships are, are replaying of our childhood wounds. That's it. And so any problems we're having in a relationship, they're a mirror to what we didn't heal in our childhood. And so that's the biggest thing we have to do. And as I said, the most important part is flip that 90%, gather friendships, join groups, learn to meet your needs. Stop asking them for to meet your needs. Stop fighting with them. It's useless. You've been with this for years. You already know it's not going to change. The only person you have control of is yourself. And so we have to take control of ourselves and learn to meet the needs ourselves. Okay. So there you go. There are the 15 signs to look for. I hope that helps you. Um, if you think it did, please like it. If you know somebody in a situation like this, or just think this might help somebody, please share it. Leave me your comments. Um, please don't leave me comments about the narcissist. Leave me comments about you. At least to me, you matter. Your health and recovery matters more to me. I can't help the narcissist. They don't want help. But please start the 90% today. Leave a comment about how you're going to turn your life around, about how you're going to make yourself a priority. That I would love to read. Okay? And I know this is all very difficult to deal with. Narcissism, I, my recovery from both of them, one almost, the recovery on one almost killed me. It's not easy. But I will say this, please enjoy the journey along the way. It does get better. So don't forget that. Enjoy the journey.